Legends Football League, Legends Cup, the new South Wales Surge, and the Western Australia Angels. Leah Turnbull and her high-flying offense square up against the Surge's stingy defense. Legends Cup, next. Life comes down to moments. Moments of triumph and moments of failure. Tonight, is my moment. Tonight, is our moment. On a stage for the world to see. The battle begins now for LFL supremacy in Australia. Gridiron's biggest stage lands in Perth, Australia. It's the Legends Cup. Welcome to a rocking NIB stadium. Hello, LFL fans, Mitch Mortaza alongside John Rowe. Joining us a little bit later, Sarah Godfrey down on the field. And John, here we are at the end of a very successful LFL Australia season and it culminates with the two best teams on the biggest stage. Absolutely, you, you couldn't have written a script any better. Look at the rankings. You've got the Surge versus the Angels. The Surge, the number one ranked offense, the number two ranked defense. The Angels, the number one ranked defense and the number two ranked offense. That's just, you couldn't have written a script any better. For me tonight, it's about the Surge captains on both sides of the ball. Bonnie Gillespie, league MVP. She's going to be fantastic. I think she should have a, a breakout game tonight because I personally don't think that WA front three has the speed or the size to match it tonight. On the defensive side of the ball, I can't believe I'm saying this, Mitch, 18 years old, Bonnie Zaya, league MVP for defense. She's young, doesn't have much experience, but wow, is she playing like a, a seasoned veteran. Yeah, and if you want to talk about captains on the WA side of the ball, you got to talk about US import Adrian Purnell. Had a great season down here and as a captain of this team. Her assignments are twofold tonight in talking to the defensive coordinators for WA. Primarily, it's to spy Gillespie. We talked about that earlier. They want to avoid her having that breakout game. And then it's to cover the flats with Shari Onley and Quincy Hewitt. That is something that New South Wales has lived off of offensively this year. And then on the offensive side for WA, it's the person we've talked about with every WA game this year, Leah Turnbull. Their young signal caller, a gutsy quarterback, can take off with the football, but also has the arm to, to stretch the field. And then when you talk about the players, outside of the players, you talk about the schemes and the coaching. These are two of the best of LFL Australia. And for a closer look at them, we go down to the field with Sarah Godfrey. Thanks, Mitch. After meeting with both head coaches, Jason Gappy from the Surge that he definitely needs to stick to what has taken his team to the grand final and that's a strong ground game to set up the pass. Defensively they need to put pressure on WA's young quarterback Leah Turnbull. After speaking with him about their recent 18-20 to 20 loss, Coach Gappy said it was more the fact that New South Wales were actually beating themselves rather than WA actually beating them. WA JR Rogers has also said he's very cautious as he knows the surge are red hot right now. He believes his offense can definitely unsettle the surge tonight, but he does not believe corners, Bronte Zaya or Corbin McGregor can match the speed of Tammy West or Tegan Brown. WA need to contain Gillespie tonight and they also need to force quarterback Justina Barclay to beat them. It doesn't get much bigger than this. Back to you guys. Well, the stage is set. It's the grand final, the Western Australia Angels versus the New South Wales Surge. Kickoff is next. We are back at NIB Stadium, the Legends Cup. Western Australia and New South Wales as we go down to the field with Sarah Godfrey. Thanks guys. Well, there's a lot of expectations on two of the stars tonight. I'm here with Shari only from the New South Wales Surge and Tammy West from the Angels. First, Shari, visiting team here tonight. Did this atmosphere intimidate you at all? Uh, no, I don't think anything intimidates the surge. We've been here before. We know what happened last time, and you're going to see a very different surge tonight. So the answer is definitely no. Good luck for the game. Thank you. Now, Tammy, you've had a lot of success here this season. How are the nerves tonight, and how is the team feeling just moments before kickoff? Uh, there's no nerves. We're, we're very much prepared. Obviously, coming off a loss last week has actually made us more focused and more determined. And uh, we've tightened up all the screws that were loose and we've actually never played to our potential in any of the games yet so hopefully we can do that tonight. Well the whole season comes down to this. Back to you guys.
Well, I'm really impressed with those athletes. You can tell Shari's been on the battlefield before. Such intensity, and she can tell she's an absolute leader. And Tammy, that's great that they've learned from last week's mistakes, and they, she looks absolutely focused. The stage is set, and here's Mo Gaxiola getting us underway. Deep kick, and that'll be a touchback, and WA will be on offense. A big stage here, have their home crowd behind them. And this offense is loaded going up against the number two ranked New South Wales defense. Let's meet this WA offense. Chloe Staff, offensive line. Adrian Fresnel, tight end. Nicole Harvey, offensive line. Tammy West, wide receiver. Tessa Atkinson, running back. Brittany Winnett, your running back. Leah Turnbull, quarterback. I like the opportunities here. Tammy West, running back. Adrian Fresnel, tight end. Got some weapons on offense. Now a first and 10 play. The first play from scrimmage, a little end around reverse. And there is that number two ranked defense. Let's meet them. Kiana Takarangi, defensive end. Allison Laws, defensive end. Monique Gaxiola, middle linebacker. Lisa Tawadiki, corner. Bruce Desire, corner. Amanda James, safety. Mallory Vogelhuber, safety. And what a call, Mitch, first up. Let's go with a reverse. First play of the Legends Cup. Now a second and 15 for WA. They're going to try the right side with Brittany Ware. Ware getting back some of that penalty yardage. She'll go for about six yards on that run. And that's going to be a key for them offensively, establishing that run game and giving Leah Turnbull some options through the pass attack. Absolutely. It's going to be the, the game planning here for J.R. Rogers is going to be critical. He's going to try the left, the right, and see where he can set up for Turnbull. Now a third and nine play from the Western Australia 16-yard line. Turnbull in the shotgun. Quick handoff goes to Brittany Weir. And Weir goes for another five yards. That'll set up about a fourth and four. Great season for Weir, John. I love it. The 7.2-yard average. I mean, you can't ask more than a running back for that. She's almost getting a first down every two runs. So great job by Weir. Now an early critical fourth down for WA. Backed up deep on their side of the field. Fourth and four. Direct snap. This one to Turnbull in the flat to Brittany Weir. Weir makes the catch but will not get the yardage. Great closing speed by that New South Wales defense, John. Uh, Mitch, you picked it in the pregame there. They hit the flat. Just a little swing pass out the right. Great call, but just there you can see the surge are swarming there. They almost had the first down, the Angels, but that surge said, no way, not today. Now a first and 10 as we get our first look at New South Wales' number two ranked offense just behind WA's offense. And Jacinda Barkley under center. That's a direct cool. snap to Barkley. Barkley goes for about seven yards on that. And that's something very rare this year, a QB sneak first up. Now we're going to meet that New South Wales offense. Charmaine Pavelka, center. Shari on lead. Tight end. Quincy Hewitt, tight end. Corbin McGregor, wide receiver. Kayla Mulvo, wide receiver. Bonnie Gillespie, running back. Justin Barclay, quarterback. And I want to see how Gillespie goes tonight. Now a second and three. That was a wide receiver screen to Kayla Mulvold, a favorite target of Jacinda Barkley this season. Now we're going to meet that WA defense. Linda Holland, defensive end. Brooke Carmichael, defensive end. Brianna Ebrook, linebacker. Melissa Bud, defensive back. Keegan Brown, lockdown corner. Tessa Atkinson, free safety. Adrian Fresnel, you're a strong safety. And I definitely want to see how that whole secondary goes tonight. That's a bit of a key. Now a third and one handoff to Bonnie Gillespie. And Gillespie, just like that, picks up the first down. Nice, just a simple little dive left. Couple of missed blocks there, but they'll, they'll iron out those, those problems. Gillespie's had a great season. The MVP, 8.3 yard average, 300 yards. Total offense, that's awesome. But I tell you what, Mitch, she can't do it without that offensive line. They've got to be moving the path for her to get the yards. League MVP honors for Bonnie Gillespie. By far the number one running back, the closest one to her, Tamar Fennell of Qu Queensland. And there's a right side handoff to Gillespie. Nice. 
Tess, Tessa Atkinson coming up to make the stop, and we sat down with Bonnie earlier. Two years in the making, my team has worked very hard for this, and we're gonna take the Mo freaking Cup! She's pumped up, she's excited. One of the more fiery players, as we look at Adrian Purnell, potentially the answer to Bonnie Gillespie tonight. This is gonna be a great matchup. Second and goal now from the Western Australia four yard line. Shotgun snap goes to Barclay. Barclay scrambling backwards and finding Quincy Hewitt in the midst of a lot of traffic. That's one of their tight ends that they use frequently, John. That was a lot of traffic, Mitch. It was a nice little zone read or play action there. Have a look, play action to Gillespie. Roll the left, great throw under pressure. And wide open in the end zone, great catch. Quincy Hewitt, she's done well, 3.5, sorry, 13.5 yard average. As you can see, they haven't targeted her much, but when they have, they've had success. Normally it's Shari Onley on that release play. That could be one of the game plans for tonight, Mitch, is, is that knowing that WA gonna target Onley. Let's go back to Quincy. And we figured that Adrian Purnell would have the coverage scheme there. And there's the extra point attempt, nothing doing. Big pressure from the number one defense. There was zero blocking there. I did notice that they, the surge had tightened up their splits a little bit. They were gonna try and run that ball in, but gee, the Angels, look out, they came to play. A very commanding early drive. That went for five plays, 24 yards. And now WA will have to answer. Right side handoff to Brittany Weir getting to the edge. And that is the kind of running they've expected from the young 18-year-old. She went for about 12 yards on this run, John. Have a look at this. This is something I haven't seen. Look at the wing back. She's pulling around the outside side, side of the right. Lead blocking for Ware. That's a great goal. I haven't seen that from WA, WA yet. That's a, that's a little something, a wrinkle they put in for maybe the Legends Cup. They missed her a bit due to injury. She had a high ankle sprain. Now back to 100%. Fake handoff to Ware. Going to try the right side. And that was intended for Nicole Harvey, the right tight end, just could not come up with it. I think, I'm looking to see if it was either tipped or if Harvey just dropped it. But again, it's just like last week. Got to make sure when you're doing that speed out or the five and out flat for the tight end, catch the ball first, then turn up field. Can't go anywhere without the football. That'll set up a second and 10 now from the New South Wales 23 yard line. Young Turnbull trying to take command of this offense on a big stage here, the grand final, playing in front of a huge crowd tonight at NIB Stadium. That was Brittany Ware again, that time only managing about a yard. There were some big hits there. That looked like a little bit of a scrum. Again, just a, a sort of a wing back pulling around to the right, but the surge were there. I like the movement that Angels are getting a little bit of momentum after that, the first series where they went four and out. Let's see what they can do. You got to keep this very athletic New South Wales defense anchored by Mo Gaxiola there off balance. And that's what they're trying to do with WA with Brittany Ware. We'll see how that works out for them. Now a third and nine play. Snap to Leah Turnbull on the right side looking for something. Nothing there. Going to take off with the ball. Go. And she is rumbling. That is not slow motion, folks. That is Leah Turnbull. Woo. And that is a 22-yard touchdown run. Oh, look, we're doing a bit. I don't know, Ian Thorpe, or a bit of surfing. Oh, we're doing the stand-up paddleboarding there, a bit of surfing. What I really like is she had a look, didn't like it, says, I'm going to go with it. She is a passer, not a runner, but she got some great blocks downfield. Very nice job all round. As I said, Leah Turnbull, she is a passer. She got an 82.5 rating. She got eight TDs this year, 292 yards passing. That's not bad, but she shows the skills with the legs there. A great first year for Turnbull. Her and Jacinda Barkley of New South Wales exchanging the number one ranking all season at the passer position. Now WA lining up for a two-point attempt. Great answer to New South Wales opening score. Sure. And off goes to Weir on the right side, and that is it. WA taking the lead, seven to six. Great acrobatics, and the crowd has got the hometown crowd is going well tonight. Mitch, WA, they love their football any way they can get it. Good crowd tonight. 
Excellent crowd, as we said earlier. They were lined up early at the gates for this one. Now a first and 10 handoff to Bonnie Gillespie on the left side. And Gillespie goes for six yards. That is money in the bank, John. Yeah, I just heard her average says it all. So we'll just give the ball to her you know, twice and we've got a first down and a bit more. I like it. It sets up a lot of things, but let's see what WA can do to try and shut down Gillespie. New South Wales definitely going to use a lot of Gillespie tonight as we near the end of the first quarter here. 7-6 to six, WA on top. A second and four play. Quick, quick pass. That to Kayla Movo almost intercepted. Nice little sort of crossing route there. You had the receiver slanting underneath the tight end with a quick out, trying to make a little pick play. I think New South Wales have seen something that they can do with the receivers. And that is the end of first quarter play. It is the hometown WA Angels up 7-6 to six on this one. It was Jacinda Barkley striking early, Leah Turnbull answering. And we are back to second quarter action here. And we're going to go down to the field again with Sarah Godfrey. Thanks, guys. I'm down on the sideline with Leah Turnbull. Can you walk us through that play? Was that a design play? Um, it was a pass play originally, and all the defense followed the right side of the field, so I just kept in got a freaking touchdown I'm I'm thrilled and we just need to keep adding those points to the board yeah. well, best of luck for the rest of the game thank you, thank you. Happy back to you guys <laughs> I love it when a QB speaks of mine yeah you could tell it was a pass play she looked and then said oh I'm going freaking I'm going that way now a third and four play to open the second quarter Adrian Purnell whiffing on the first tackle and that's Bonnie Gillespie going for four yards Great little zone blocking to the left, but yeah, Purnell saw the crease, bam, straight in there. Now a first and 10 play for New South Wales. This offense really hitting a gear in the latter part of the season. And it's translating here at the Legends Cup. First and 10 at the New South Wales 21. That's Jacinda Barkley just bulldozing her way on the right side. And that's going to go for 25 yards. Answering Leah Turnbull's scramble. That is Jacinda Barkley playing like a fullback, John. Look at that. Just, <laughs> this is rugby. This is rugby union. Just to get in behind the mall and go. you got Bonnie Gillespie 20 yards downfield blocking. We've seen both QBs show off their wheels tonight. Wow. Did not expect that. They're going to use Jacinda Barkley's size against what you talked about in the pregame show, a very small interior front for WA. Was it old school style mix? Was it the flying V or the flying wedge back in the day? Not sure I've seen that. A definite designed quarterback sneak. Now the extra point attempt for New South Wales on the right side. Too easy, as you Aussies say. And that's Bonnie Gillespie going in. That'll give New South Wales a 13 to seven lead. It is too easy when you got Gillespie. Just give it off to the right, get in the end zone. I like the call. This is turning into a heavyweight fight back and forth. It'll be up to WA to answer once again. First and 10 from their own 15 yard line handoff to Ware. And Ware goes for about five yards. Really nice job. Offensive scouting there, you can tell the pressure surge is coming on. On first down, they're, they're going. And the and the Angels are using the surge momentum to block them and block them in certain types of angles so that, that uh, where you can see that crease, make a single cut, and bam, in she's into the second level. Now a second and five play handoff goes to Tegan Brown this time from the wide receiver position. And Brown goes for five yards. That's going to be good enough to move the sticks. A first and first down for WA. Allison Law is on the stop. That was a nice run, but somebody's got on that edge there has got to do a better job of blocking that cornerback. I think it was Law, as you just said. She, she penetrated too quick and made that running back cut up. Law is in place of Chloe Butler, who is missing from the lineup, the all-star defensive end. Actually part of the national rugby team for Australia. Quick screen that time to wear, and she just drops the ball. Lucky I've got my uh, iPad insured, Mitch, because I've just thrown it on the floor in disgust. It's broken into a thousand pieces. We've seen that you've got to catch the ball. Just a great little swing pass. We knew they were going to do this as part of the WA game plan. Catch it. You can see that she's got her eyes up, 
looking for the surge defenders. Catch the ball first, then do what you need to do. Great job by Leah Turnbull there, kind of keeping the safeties at bay. And then throwing it to Ware last second, obviously Ware dropping the ball. Now a second and 10 play, handoff again to Ware on the left side. And there goes those turbo jets. That'll be enough for a first down. A nice 10 yard run by Brittany Ware. That was awesome. No, Ware didn't even get touched until she's about 15 yards up the field. Really nice job from Angel showing the block. It's a nice little off tackle left run. Good job. That is a first and 10 now for WA. Mo Gaxiola looking on. This will potentially be her fourth championship. I think she wants oh. this. Bad snap. For Leah Turnbull. Turnbull going on the left side. That is dangerous as Bronte Zire comes up to try to lay the wood there. <laughs> Somebody, as we say, got jacked up. I might have been Brittany Chip watching the running back here. The snap's high, running back snaps, and boom, somebody goes down there. Great recovery. You can feel the pressure there, but gee, I hope we don't see the, the bad snaps that we've seen in, in previous times, Mitch, because that could be a key. I'm seeing, as you said before, it's a title fight. They, the Angels need to score on this possession to make it go one for one. That'll set up a second and 11. Turnbull losing a yard on that scramble. Now a second and 11 play, going to try the left side to Adrian Purnell, just off the fingertips of Purnell. Wow. Leah Turnbull, tip of the cap. That ball, what a sensational pass. Put it in the spot, right in the corner, around two defenders. Nice little smash around to the corner. Purnell usually has super glue on her hand. She can make those catches any day of the week. What a shame. Great pass from Turnbull, though. Those are opportunities you need in a game like this. And unexpectedly, the U.S. import drops one in the corner of the end zone. Now a third and 11 play from the New South Wales 16-yard line. Trying the middle and nothing doing. Let's sit down and talk with Adrian Purnell. Winning a championship in any continent would be absolutely amazing, but I think winning tonight would definitely be a staple in my career. And as you said, she's won in a lot of places and is the leader on this team. But boy, I hope that that drop catch in the end zone there, sorry, the drop pass doesn't stay with her. She need, mentally needs to get back in this game. Purnell obviously a contributor on both sides of the ball. Fourth and 11, key fourth and 11 here for WA on the left side again, and just simply overthrows the receiver, Tegan Brown. And a turnover on downs, a great stop by this New South Wales defense. Once again, it was that Purnell drop that could be a key factor going late into this game. I like the call. They went back to the smash wrap, but what I saw open there, Mitch, was I think it's where Brittany Ware was the running back. She was open for about 15 yards, just on a simple swing route. The cornerback, it might have been uh, Bronte Zai hanging back to see that smash route. Could have had something short in the first down. That was an eight-play drive by WA, accounting for zero points. And there's the oh. option to Bonnie Gillespie. And they are lucky that was not a fumble recovered by W.A. Melissa Budd coming up from the corner position. Love the play, though. I don't think I've seen Serge do that all year. Fake the tight end reverse. Option off that linebacker. Draws the defensive end down. But Gillespie, I think that pitch was just a little bit behind her. And that will bring us to the two-minute warning of the second quarter. Barkley capping a great drive. We are back to second quarter action at the two-minute warning. Western Australia Angels in the New South Wales Surge, the grand final at NIB Stadium. It's the Legends Cup. Now a second and 10 play for New South Wales. Lucinda Barkley on a design quarterback sneak to the right side, and she is just a bulldozer going for about nine yards on that carry. I think everybody except for the water boy and the coaches we're out to the right side, pulled on that play, and led the way. Nice design play. And Barkley gets out of bounds. That will stop the clock. And set up a third and one from the New South Wales 25-yard line. Barkley now becoming a dual threat with her big arm and also her scrambling ability. Shotgun snap to Barkley again, looking to run. No, this time dumps it off. That one went to Quincy Hewitt. 
And that went for about eight yards. That'll be enough for a first down. Nice job of Hewitt just finding the soft spot in the zone there. Barclay rolling right, throwing on the run. Great job, just a nice job all around. First and 10, plenty of time on the clock as New South Wales still has their timeout remaining. A first and 10 from the 17. Dump off goes to Bonnie Gillespie acrobatically. And I don't think she's down there. I don't know if she was touched by a WA player. Tessa Atkinson was just standing over top. Yeah, I don't, I, good call, Mitch. I'm not sure. It's WA bringing at least four to five blitzes. Oh, yeah, touched on the legs there. Okay. Four to five blitzes. Gillespie open, just a little swing round. Now a second and four shotgun play. Again on the right side, that one just simply dropped. That drop by Kayla Molvold. And the clock continues to run. They should be stopping it on an incomplete pass. What's going on here? First year timekeeper in Australia, perhaps. <laughs> we run on a different time zone, Mitch, to you guys. Now a second and four play. Again from the shotgun, again to the right side, and nobody there. Adrian Purnell almost stepping in front of that pass. Keep Purnell, nice job seeing where the receivers were all hitching up. I thought it was a great throw on the run by Barclay again. The receivers have just got to do a better job of hitching and trying to get that first down. But wow, Purnell saw it. That's why that's the star player who she is. This would be a huge stop for WA, and this crowd knows it. Getting behind this number one ranked defense. Third and four now. There's the reverse. Here this time Corbin McGregor, oh. and she's going to throw out of the reverse. Woo. That complete to Kayla Molvold in the back of the end zone. What a huge play, and you saw over pursuit by the WA defense. Great call by Taryn Tan, the offensive coordinator of New South Wales. He must have been listening on my phone calls, Mitch, because I was just talking to some coaches the other day saying, we've seen reverses, we've seen double reverses, but we haven't seen a reverse option pass. And bam, what a time to bring it out in the Legends Cup. Excellent call. And a bit of concern setting in with WA. New South Wales now has enough time, obviously, to go for the extra point. 36.6 remaining. We've got a stoppage here. Western Australia is ruling on the field that the pass, the forward pass occurred behind the line of scrimmage. Yes, okay, so JR is not happy. So here we go, tight air, it's the reverse, the receiver. Let's find out where the line of scrimmage is. The foot is fine. Nothing wrong there, wide open in the end zone. Excellent, no call by the officials. Obviously, this will be challenged and reviewed. But as you said, it looked like Corbin McGregor's left plant foot was just behind the line of scrimmage. That touchdown should stand. Yeah, it should. After reviewing the play, the ruling on the field stands. Touchdown. Here we go. Western Australia. I love the home crowd getting vocal. They don't like it. Coach JR there didn't like it. But I'll tell you what, they've obviously practiced that and just able to throw it just before the line of scrimmage. Now the one-point attempt by New South Wales. That's going to be a delayed little dump off <laughs> to Bonnie Gillespie doing a bit of everything as Gillespie tonight. And that'll take New South Wales up 20 to 7. Oh, OK. I don't know whether it would be rude to say Planet of the Apes or what's going on here. She's King Kong. I might be King Kong. That's what it is. But I'll tell you what, any defender, any good defender in the country would have seen that the Gillespie was going to get that ball because she was drying her hands, wiping her hands. The pass is coming to me. That's what people do. That was hilarious. If she's not a target of a defense after everything she's done this year, <laughs> you got to scratch your head at that one. If you're a WA fan, you expect somebody to be spying on Gillespie. Oh, absolutely. Somebody's going to be marking her the whole game. Now 31 seconds remaining. WA does have their final timeout, or their only timeout of the half, I should say. And they're going to take a big shot down the field. Oh. And that looked like to have a little bit of contact there. And we've got a flag. Good call, that sort of thing. The ruling. While well, the pass was in the air. Pass interference, defense number five. Ball is placed in the spot of the foul. Automatic first down. Amanda James 
A great free safety for New South Wales. Unfortunately, making contact with Tegan Brown a little early there, John. Absolutely. You know, the rule is, did the defender impede the receiver for catching the ball? Absolutely. Good call. A pair of great calls by the officiating crew here. Now a first and goal from the New South Wales 10. And that ball bounces off the hands of Nicole Harvey. Intercepted by Amanda James, making up for that pass interference. I'm, I'm flabbergasted here. Wow, what a pickup. Nice little pass to come off the hands. Yeah, that should have been caught. Should have been caught. What a reaction. What a run. Definitely making up. That is a big turnaround there. You've got to think WA would have had a couple shots at the end zone with a timeout and two as much time as they had on the clock. Oh, I mean, 13, 13 seconds to go. Surge have just scored. You had that momentum going. What's going to happen here? Now a first and 10 play to Bonnie Gillespie. And you've got to think New South Wales is happy to just run this clock out and take a commanding 20 to 7 lead into halftime. They've got the momentum, that's for sure. Oh, no. what's going on here? No, they're going to go and they're going to take a shot here. They stopped the clock with about 2.8 seconds remaining. So a little shift in strategy offensively for New South Wales. You know what? I don't mind the call. Some coaches might say, oh, this is not traditional, not sportsmanship. I like it. They're up. They've just scored. They realize they've got two seconds to go. Hey, let's do a double reverse option pass with a twist, or we can do a Hail Mary, or we can give a little Gillespie on the screen. Let's have a bit of fun here. A third and four play, and this should be the last play of the half. Barclay directing traffic in the backfield. Her big arm should get it down the field. There it is. And that should have been an interference call on Melissa Budd, according to Kayla Molvold. And now will bring us to halftime. New South Wales up 20 to 7 as we go down the field to Sarah Godfrey. Thanks, guys. I'm down on the sideline with Jacinda Barclay. You guys are leading at halftime. How are you feeling? Have the nerves settled at all? The nerves have definitely settled. Yeah. I'm really happy with the girls. We've had a solid, solid first half, so couldn't ask for anything more right now. Very solid, that's for sure. Well, best of luck for the rest of the game. Thanks, thanks so much. No worries. Yeah. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sarah. And that is a dejected WA team heading into the locker room, down 20 to 7 at halftime. It has been all New South Wales. A dominating first half performance by the number one ranked New South Wales surge as we return to halftime festivities here at NIB Stadium. Mitch Mortaza, John Rowe once again. And John, what a lot of WA fans feared is coming to life here. That number one ranked New South Wales surge playing like it, flawless in the first half, while WA is making key mistakes. Absolutely, there were some opportunities lost, and none more than this Adrian Purnell drop in the corner of the end zone, and this Leah Turnbull interception. But for me tonight, the, the Angels have gone for it on fourth down twice and have not converted at all. Yeah, both offenses have managed to put some points on the board, though. Let's look at the first half scoring. It all started with Jacinda Barkley finding Quincy Hewitt on this four-yard touchdown pass to give New South Wales the first lead of the game at six to nothing. Then it was the unlikely of stories with Leah Turnbull turning in this 22-yard touchdown run to give WA a seven to six lead. Then it was Jacinda Barkley saying, what you can do, I can do better. Turning in this 25-yard touchdown run to give New South Wales a 13-7 lead. Then right before the half, it was the New South Wales offense getting cute with Corbin McGregor on this reverse touchdown pass to Kayla Mulvo taking a commanding 20-7 halftime lead. Now let's take a look at the first half stats, John. Yeah, for me, the surge, it's a strong, balanced offense here. 68 yards on the ground and 31 in the air. And I'll tell you what, this second-ranked defense for the surge has held the Angels to just three yards passing. For me, the surge, it looks like they've got this game in hand. Absolutely, John. We are down to a final 16 minutes of football to a championship. Who will win it? The second half kickoff next. Back to third quarter action here at NIB Stadium, a packed house. Hoping this WA can mount some kind of a comeback as we look at the two running backs in the first half. Bonnie Gillespie having a good night, but Brittany Ware, six carries, 39 yards, six and a half average, good job. 
An unexpected edge by Brittany Ware over Bonnie Gillespie. And now we go down to the field with Sarah Godfrey, who's with Adrian Purnell. Thanks, guys. I'm down here on the sideline with Adrian Purnell. As a leader and veteran of the sport, what do you tell your teammates to believe in themselves so you guys can turn this game around in the second half? Just capitalize. Um, our defense needs to stop breaking down coverage in the secondary, and once we do that, we are unstoppable. We just got to get this scoring out so our offense can get the ball back and score. I guess we're about to find out what the Angels are really made of. <laughs> yes, you are. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sarah. And that's Adrian Purnell going for her first ever championship. And on the other side of the ball, it's Mo Gaxiola knowing that it comes down to one half of football. Don't get comfortable. This is the time not to get comfortable. You keep your foot on their throat. Keep them down. How bad do you want it, God damn it? 16 minutes away. Let's go. And I'll tell you what, Mitch, you know what I like about that scene right there? The coaches let the players do the talking. They need, they're on the field. They need this momentum. They need to take control. That's what I love to see. Let the coaches let the players do the talking and fire it up for the, for the second half of the Legends Cup. And that's just not any player. That's a player with three rings. So she knows how to win a championship, Mo Gaxiola. And there's Melissa Budd getting us underway. Deep kick in the end zone. Here we go. Gillespie is going to bring it out. Ill-advised, but she finds a seam getting past midfield all the way to the 20-yard line. What a return by Gillespie to start the third quarter. I think I said it from day one. Gillespie reads the blocks really, really well. If the blocker pushes the, the player out, she cuts back up the middle. I think she only needed one more block there. She could have taken that to the house. And now that New South Wales offense that posted 20 points in the first half goes back to work. We heard from Adrian Purnell saying that they need a four and out here. Let's see if that defense can tighten up. First and 10 from the Western Australia 20-yard line. Barkley back to pass on the right side. And Melissa Budd had an easy pick and just could not come up with it. Key there for the Angels. They could have had that. Checking off the Gillespie. The linebacker goes, so you've got one-on-one. -on -one. Somebody misread that. Somebody was either supposed to do a post route or a fade route. Gee, Angels unlucky. That could have been a game changer. That is exactly what WA needed. The first year corner, Melissa Budd just couldn't come up with it. Now a second and 10 as the crowd comes alive. And here's Barkley again on a design quarterback sneak, finds a seam on the left side. And Barkley goes in from 20 yards out. That is her second score of the night. Wow. That's all I'm going to say, which is wow. Let's have a look. Sees has a look there, everyone's covered. She says, I'm gone, see you later, bye. Receivers were covered, Bonnie Gillespie was covered, tight ends were covered, which leaves nobody on the quarterback. Great job. And two WA defenders knocking each other off that play. But what a weapon Barkley has become. And sorry, Mitch, just as you just said a minute ago, if Bud had, if, 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 if Bud had intercepted that, we're talking about something completely different, but now third score. That is at least a seven-point swing if Melissa Budd comes up with that interception. Now the extra point option. Very easy. That goes to Gillespie. And that will give New South Wales a commanding 28-7 lead here in the grand final. That is the reason they are the number one ranked team almost all season. What a way to come out of the lover rooms. Bam, straight on, take the kickoff. Great run by Gillespie, set it up. Barclay with a couple of passes, almost intercepted. Then Barclay said, I'm going to the end zone. Really good planning at half time. I wonder what Coach JR and the Angels can do for the second half. It is going to need some miracle coaching here. And now we go down to the field with Sarah Godfrey, who's with Bonnie Gillespie. So I'm down here on the sideline with Bonnie Gillespie. It looks like you're having a lot of fun out there. You're about a quarter and a half away from winning this championship. Oh, yeah. I'm loving it. I'm loving my team. They're doing an amazing job. And I'm loving these fans right here. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Back to you guys. Bonnie touched on it right there. I'll tell you what, uh, I think you mentioned maybe, Mitch, is those New South Wales fans, they've travelled a long way. They've done the 40,000 million journey, mile journey from Sydney to WA. That's back five years with daylight savings times. Great support of them. Excellent fan turnout on both sides, and that's Leah Turnbull again 
on the left side, and she'll go for about 11 yards. Both quarterbacks showing some mobility here. I was just watching that game. We haven't seen this, I think, all season. So, you know, obviously both coaches have seen something where they believe the quarterbacks are unmarked or just being let to be by themselves. So why not put them in the game plan? With Barkley, we've seen a bit of that this year, but not much from uh, Leah Turnbull. A first and 10 play now from the New South Wales 24. There's the handoff to Weir, and Weir trying to break tackles and just kind of stumbles over her own feet, and Mo Gaxiola's there. A little bit of a, 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 it was either Brittany's fault there or the tight end pulling. It was just a, a nice little, going to be a kick out block by the tight end to the right, but there was no patience by Weir. She's got to let that block develop, and then bam, she can cut it up right between the center and the tight end. I think that's the big difference between Gillespie and Weir. Gillespie seems to be a little more seasoned, a little more patient, allowing the blocks to develop. And Weir, at 18 years old, is struggling a bit. Oh, but if she keeps going the way she's going, imagine how good she's going to be next year. Absolutely. WA is a very young roster. Expect for them to challenge for the grand final for years to come. And here's a nil pass to Tegan Brown, and Brown breaks a tackle, Boom. getting into the secondary, still on her feet. And Brown manages 11 yards. What a great weapon for them at the wide receiver position, Tegan Brown. I'm not sure what both, both, both players are doing at the same spot, but wow, once Brown catches it, way too high surge. You've got to get low. You've got to get low. You can't do shoulder charging in the Legends Cup. You've got to tackle around the waist. A little bit of a smile there from JR. Rogers, I think this is the first time we've seen him smile tonight. The offense showing some life. It has not had life since Leah Turnbull ran that 22-yard touchdown run in the first quarter. That's Brittany Ware. And Ware goes for about four yards. That's Allison Laws and Monique Gaxiola on the stop. Angels have got to score here. Have got to score. <laughs> Game's not over, but it, it may slip away from them if they don't get in the end zone. Second and sixth play now. Monique Gaxiola knows the importance of a stop here. Ball's at the New South Wales nine, and the crowd is starting to come to life. There's a little end around reverse. This one goes to Tammy West, cutting back to the inside. Loses the ball. Get on. Looks like she crossed the plane. That'll be six for WA. Exactly what they needed, John. Woo. Talk about a shot of adrenaline. I thought that the surge, we're going to start with surge, bring four rushes. And that was a very long developing reverse. And I thought she was going to get tough. I was, I was screaming in the booth, don't slow down, go for the corner. But she planted, cut it back, and just got in. That makes this game only a two score game. With WA very much so alive and the crowd loving it. Here at NIB Stadium in Perth, Australia. Great to see a lot of Angels gear in the stands here too. Oh, the fan base here has been incredible. And they are loving every moment of this slight comeback by WA. Now the two-point attempt. And wide open. <laughs> and that is Tegan Brown. And that will make the game 28 to 15. What a catch and what a throw under pressure. I think, I think the surge brought six players, full blitz. There was only, I think, one in coverage. Turnbull had immense pressure. And if we get the replay of this, there'll be a, that was a spectacular one-handed, left-handed, spin around, catch. What a great job. Tegan Brown, a key component of that five-play, 35-yard scoring drive as WA stays in this game. Here's Barkley, a little scramble to the right side. Oh! Had Kayla Mulvold. That was six points, gift wrap. Oh, I miss, I'm throwing the headsets again. You're behind, how does WA let somebody get behind them in the secondary? You got a post route, a seam route down the middle, two surge players in the one spot. Please catch the ball and run it into the end zone. Great job by Barclay on the throw. Admittedly had to stop at GWA, get your head in the game. Nobody should be getting behind you, especially at this stage of the game. You got to think that WA was ISOing Bonnie Gillespie. A great time for New South Wales to take a shot, but Mobile could not come up with it. And now Shari Onley 
And she goes for about four yards on that one. And Mitch, let me bring you back to something you, you touched on. I think you're dead right. Is I think the Angels said it was first down, so the ball's going to go to Gillespie. So they were thinking, run the whole way. That's how those receivers were able to sneak in behind the WA secondary. Good call. And John, you waited till the grand final to validate my football knowledge. Thank you, sir. Third <laughs> and six here. There's a screen pass to Gillespie. And that's Adrian Purnell leading the way with Tegan Brown. And this has been a physical game. Let's listen in. I'll tell you what, there'll be plenty of radon sparks tonight. Denker up in deep heat. His, his athletes are leaving all on the field tonight. Legends Cup. They won't, they won't care about the bruises and the injuries. They'll do it for the win. Now a vital fourth down play for this defense. And that's Jacinda Barkley finding Quincy. Hewitt has been very active tonight. That is a massive first down for New South Wales to retain possession and make sure that clock continues to move. The Angels on defense are still swarming. They've still got the attitude and the hunger. They got that surge, just starting to roll with it now. That could have been a great stop for WA. They've had their opportunities here in the second half. They just could not stop this number two offense. Now a first and 10 play. Lucinda Barkley, quick screen. That one to Corbin McGregor. And McGregor will get six yards. And that should bring us to the end of the third quarter. Good call. WA still within striking distance, about 13 point game here. Never finished college, John, but I believe that is a 13 point edge. <laughs> Football will teach you everything you know. I think you've got a degree of life at the School of Hard Knocks, mate. You've done well. That'll bring us to the end of the third quarter. It's been Jacinda Barkley in this new South Wales offense, but WA showing signs of life. A final eight minutes remaining until we crown our first ever LFL Australia champion. Now a second and four for New South Wales. There's the reverse. This one to Corbin McGregor getting to the outside edge. Great block by Jacinda Barkley. And that is another score for this offense. This time an 18-yard reverse with Corbin McGregor. Wow, you can see Barkley setting yourself up to have a block. Right now, just give her the MVP for me. She's run, she's passed, she's blocking. You ask a QB like that to block, great job. What a call. And this number one ranked defense of J.R. Rogers is being shredded tonight. There's got to be a bit of frustration on that sideline. I'll tell you what, there is too, because did you see what was over his right shoulder? It was the cup. He can't be standing that, he can't be happy standing that close to it and watching this game slip away. Now the extra point attempt by New South Wales. It'll be a two point attempt. And there's that famous bootleg of New South <laughs> Wales. That's Jacinda Barkley simply lowering her shoulder and taking what she wants. Too big, too tough, too strong. She was falling over into the end zone score. Now making that lead somewhat insurmountable at 38 to 15. Co or, coaches are yeah, sorry, Mitch. The coaches are happy there. You can hear the, the surge fans that have traveled all this way in the, in, the, in the crowd. They're happy. Good play calling, good drive. That is solid execution. As we've said all along, this was the preseason number one ranked team, and they are fitting that bill here late in the season. Now a first and ten for Leah Turnbull and company, and that's a handoff to Brittany Weir on the right side. Great open field tackle by the 2014 Defensive Player of the Year, Bronte Zire. Have a look at this home, people. This is just textbook tackle. Shoulder across the body, hat on the ball. 
Nice job. Good job. Second and two now. At some point, there's got to be some urgency for this WA offense. Mitch, I was about to say exactly the same thing that they're, they're running, but as you say, they got to start taking some shots downtown and get into the end zone a couple, couple more times real quick. Now, John, you remember what I said about me not being good at math, correct? Yes. I gave them 38 points. They're at 36. My apologies. <laughs> and there's Leah Turnbull. She runs for about four yards, and that's enough for a first down. Turnbull a little disgusted still. Yeah, just checking that out there. She's got to stay focused. You want to believe that you can come back and, and make this a game. They've, got, they've certainly got the players and the quarterback to do it. It is a short field in the LFL. You do have a timeout. And if you stop the opposition four and out, you're going to have good field position. So yes, it's a, it's a bit of a cushion there for New South Wales, but not insurmountable. Absolutely. They've got, the Angels are going to believe that. First and 10 now as we get under six minutes. Shotgun here. Oh. Turnbull evading the pass rush. Now possibly a holding call in the backfield. And Turnbull running a bit scared. She went for about seven yards. Sorry, John, but I think we're going to have a holding call on WA. Because the, the Angels line had to, had to pass protect for a long time. During the run, holding, number nine, on, WA. Five-yard penalty remains. First down. And that was Nicole Harvey caught holding in the backfield. I think she had to because there was big pressure coming from the, uh, the left side of the surge line. And this is where WA has got to dig deep. J.R. Rogers trying to encourage this squad. And as we've said all along, they have the offensive weapons. You're talking about Tammy West, Tegan Brown, Brittany Ware. A decent front line and a good quarterback. You expect them to have more points than only 15 points here. Well, I said we've had a couple of drop passes, a couple of missed opportunities. Those fourth down conversions not working. It's, it's got to be mental mistakes going on there. And that's the key, a young quarterback and keeping her encouraged and positive. And I'm sure with Miss Leah Turnbull will be in a few more of these grand finals before her career's done. Oh, for sure. Now a first and 15 from the Western Australia 22. Quick, quick little screen pass. That one went to Elise Chapman, the center. And that went for about five yards. Bronte Zire on the tackle. I was about to say, and who's on the form tackle again? Miss MVP. Talk about young talent with endless potential. That's Bronte Zire. And WA still trying to sling the rock. Nobody under that pattern. That's what we wanted to see. We wanted to see it going a little bit deep, but obviously a bit of miscommunication. Throwing the post route. The clock continues to run in the LFL until we get to the two minute warning. Then it's a lot like the NFL, National Football League rules with stoppage. Every second is vital right now to WA in their hopes of a grand final. Oh, and that's a bad handoff where Brittany Weir just mishandles it. And she'll lose a yard. Allison Law is in the backfield. Yo, let's have a look at this here. Good snap, good handoff, not securing the ball. Want to obviously change it from the right-hand side to the left-hand side with that blocker. Now a fourth and 11. Obviously critical oh. and just thrown behind the receiver, Tegan Brown, or Chloe Stout. And you wonder, why are you going to Chloe Stout on fourth and 11? A couple of calls, exactly what you just said there, Mitch. And just give yourself a couple more seconds. They seem really, really rushed. Didn't take the time for the fourth down to get the first down and then keep going. I think that's, that's uh, obviously some mental mistakes creeping in there. You got to think the significance of that fourth down play. Maybe you use your time out there. Absolutely. And rally the troops. Nonetheless, New South Wales has taken over at about midfield. Barclay in the shotgun. Now finding a seam, nothing. Finally, that front three of WA gets to Barclay. Oh, actually not happening.
And just as we expected, frustration starting to set in, and it's still going. There we go. Oh, the ref's in there. I don't think Adrian Purnell is going to take a shot to the head from anybody. What's going on here? So, yeah. Angels bringing three, pressure breaks down. There's your tackle. Thrown to the ground, nothing wrong with that. That's Stephanie Lothberg coming back from a knee injury. We've got to say, Mitch, uh, other than that, we've, we've had a pretty decent Legends Cup. The, the feeling hasn't been shown from, from the opening kickoff. That's the first time we've seen it. There's definitely a bit of mutual respect going both ways. Second and 14 now. Quick screen to Shari Onley, and Onley motoring. And that was a gain of five yards, and Onley is showing a lot of leadership tonight. You know those 32 minutes? They're half gone. Yeah. Hey, you know I'm getting the ball, right? You know I'm getting it. She didn't laugh. She didn't laugh. She didn't laugh. She didn't laugh. She crazy. Make them leave here regretting they ever f***ing came. Put someone in the dirt. I love Shari. She's laughing while she's still got the ball getting the first down. <laughs> it is just fun now for New South Wales. And there was a dart of a pass for Corbin McGregor, and McGregor simply, simply drops that. Yeah, we're loving it. Guys, the game's all over here. You've got to finish this thing out. You've got to catch the pass. That looked like a great pass. But yeah, the leadership of Shari only. That's someone you, I, I want on my team any day. Great leader, great player. Some of that intensity from Anli coming from her days as a gladiator. Yes, she was a gladiator here in Australia, the popular TV show. The old school TV show. Now a fourth and nine as we're at the two minute warning. And New South Wales is in full control of this grand final. Jacinda Barkley having a career game as is most of her offense, including Corbin McGregor, who extends the lead 36 to 15. Back for the final two minutes of the grand final for LFL Australia, the Legends Cup, and there is your game MVP, Jacinda Barkley, doing it through the air and the ground, John. Well done, I mentioned it before, I was hoping she'd get it. She's done blocking, she's done running, she's done passing. That is an MVP performance, well done and well deserved. A lot of excitement as Barkley is originally from Perth, and they are less than two minutes away from a bit of champagne oh, and little, the Legends Cup trophy. A little bit of silverware there, a little bit of champers, and some excellent items to celebrate the Legends Cup win. A must have for any champion, huh? <laughs> call, call now to get yours, LFL. Now a fourth and nine. Yet another big opportunity for this WA defense. Cinda Barkley gonna take off with it again herself on the left side. And just exploding into Tegan Brown. Tegan's gonna get low. You've got a free hit on a quarterback coming at you. Get low. Again, have a look at pass to the right. She's gonna take up, that's where she scored most of the points tonight. What's with this shoulder charging business? We don't do that in Australia. We tackle properly. That was enough for a first down. And the clock continues to run. First and 10 at the Western Australia 14 from the shotgun. There's Barkley looking to the end zone. Nobody there. Gonna take off herself, but there is a penalty. I want to see that again, Mitch, because it looked like Barclay wanted to go to Gillespie, but I'm not sure if Gillespie got held or tripped over. Because I know she was looking at that's what, why she paused for a second. That is a five-yard holding penalty on New South Wales. That'll set up a first and 15. Lucinda Barkley. Having an incredible game, as we said, this is her hometown. There are a lot of family members in the upper deck of this stadium. <laughs> they didn't uh, have to travel too far. Now a first and 15 from the shotgun goes Barkley on the left side. Nobody there. Looks like the receiver ran a go pattern. 
And Barkley expected Corbin McGregor to hook. I've thrown one of those, Mitch, and they're very ugly. The goat pattern, and the defender comes in, possibly return it the other way. A little bit of miscommunication. Come on, let's finish this strong. Not mental mistakes. Second and 15. And WA showing some respect to this crowd, this fan base that has supported him all year. Now Barkley again in the shotgun on the right side to Sherry Onley. Onley breaking arm tackles and gets blasted on the sideline. That could have been another penalty. Way out of bounds. But you, can't, you cannot bring Onley down just with an arm. You're going to need the whole body to tackle. Onley did get out of bounds, and that did stop the clock. Obviously, this is a point in the game where you just want to run the clock out, get out, and celebrate. Absolutely. Just keep, keep it safe. Now a third and 10 play. Under a minute remaining. Barkley in the shotgun. Dropping back, looking to the left side. Just overshoots her receiver. That was intended for Kayla Mobile. The Bonnie tonight, though, 5.4 yard average, five rushes. She's been pretty quiet. She's had five yard rushes tonight. The, the star's been Barkley. Uh, who would have thought that? We expected Bonnie Gillespie to have a bigger impact. She has not had to, as you said. It has been Jacinda Barkley the whole way through the air and on the ground. Gillespie contributing where she can. Fourth and 10. And Barkley fakes the handoff. Going to try the right side, and that is complete. That goes out to, I believe that was Quincy Hewitt. No, check that, Kayla Mulvold. Nice little hitcher out there. I think they've been trying to hit that a couple of times tonight. A couple have been incomplete. Just haven't got it now. They've got the hitches going. Not enough for a first down as WA takes over. Kind of academic at this point, though. Good to see Coach Jason get a little insight there how they call the defensive signals. Obviously, all the hand signals mean something to the uh, defensive line, the linebackers, the defensive backs. Let's see what the Surge can do. Just need to shut them down here. First and 10 from the seven yard line, deep in their own side of the field. There's Tun Turnbull just trying a little screen pass. That's incomplete. I like the call, though. The tight end looked like she was blocking first, and then actually went after the right flat for a bit of a screen pass. Interesting call. Second and 10 now. And WA is backed up to their own seven yard line. Turnbull trying the left side. Oh. And that was intended for Elise Chapman. Chapman dislodged by Bronte Zire. <laughs> Who again, Mitch? Who was that? That would be our 18-year-old superstar, right corner, number 11. She's had a great game tonight with several solo tackles. I think as a coach and as a team, that's what you, you want somebody like that on your team that you can trust to make those tackles one-on-one. -on -one. This franchise is in great hands with some really young superstars. Now a third and 10, and that had oh. no shot. Amanda James nearly picking up her second interception of the night. It looked like there were three receivers out to the right there, and they were going with the old 360 vertical. Everybody fly, but the Turnbull looked like she was throwing to a spot rather than a, a, a fade route. It will come down to one final play. If WA converts, they extend the drive. If they don't, New South Wales are your 2014 LFL Australia champions. No pressure, New South Wales defense. <laughs> no pressure. Just take a look over at the table and see that big cup, the Legends Cup. This is it. Now a fourth and ten play. Turnbull back in the shotgun on the left side, a deep, deep pass, and that one's oh. picked off. That's Amanda James, and that is her second interception of Turnbull. Still on her feet. And James returns it for 18 yards. I want to have a look at this one, Mitch. Did James steal it from somebody? Or did she catch it cleanly? Turnbull eyeing down to the left side the whole way. Oh, she took it away. Yep. Like, 
looked like the WA Angels player had it. And then that might have been Bronte had it, and then James comes up with it. And a great stiff arm on Elise Chapman there. Big don't argue. New South Wales taking over and not taking a knee. This is interesting. And that goes incomplete. Not sure what the logic is here. Oh, I'm going to say right there, Mitch, I'll put it out on the line. That was a stupid call. You are throwing into double coverage on a simple seven-yard hitch route. You've got to have something better than that. More importantly, you're 25.4 away from a championship. Pop the champagne, go home, <laughs> celebrate in Sydney. Looks like they're celebrating now on the sideline there. Looks like the merchandise is being handed out. This game all but over. What a special moment when it sets in that you are going to be hoisting that trophy <laughs> in less than 30 seconds. And there's Barkley, your game MVP, still running. Oh, great run. And what a great season it's been. I'd like to take this opportunity and thank you, John, for joining me in the booth. And hopefully we have a few more years up here. And there's Barkley. He's had a great night tonight. Look at that, 10 of 23, 50 yards. But it wasn't her arm tonight, it was her legs. And just on that, Mitch, I want to thank you for letting me be in the booth here with you, getting an Aussie commentator in for the LFL. It's been a great run. We've seen four great teams throughout the year. It's been fantastic. And also a great team on the field and in the truck. Our director, Patrick Rulig. Our producer, Gino Payne. A great way to kick off this sport down under. Amazing crowds at the stadiums. A lot of people tuning in on our Australian broadcaster, Seven Mate, and oh. seen in over 120 territories around the world. The, the TV crowd's been fan fantastic. I'm getting stopped everywhere telling me how much they love the program. And I'll tell you what, I, I want to see those Maiden fans go off again with the, with the pirate ship. I want to see that next year. A great future for the sport as we bring this to an end. There's Jacinda Barkley taking the victory knee. Bronte Zire in tears <laughs> as it's starting to set in. You are the LFL champions. And a bit of heartbreak for Adrian Purnell, who came 8,000 miles in search of a championship. <laughs> and the cannons are blowing, confetti's in the air, and your new South Wales surge are your 2014 LFL Australia champions. Congratulations. Bonnie Gillespie hugging Mo Gaxiola. What a mentor that had to be for her this year. Just an incredible atmosphere here. And the WA fans <laughs> enjoying some of this as well as we go down to the field with Sarah Godfrey, who's with a pair of new LFL champions. So I'm down here on the sideline with Monique and Shari, the Legends Cup winners. Now this is your fourth championship win, first one in Australia. How do you feel? Um, it's an unexplainable feeling, you know. I couldn't have done it without these girls. This is a hell of a team. I knew it since day one when I first got here two years ago. These girls are awesome. Um, the fourth one is great, but it, this one is one to remember, you know. It's Australia, and I fucking love these girls. Sorry for cussing, but it's an indescribable feeling. I'm sorry. Well done on the win. And Shari. <laughs> <laughs> and you've been a veteran of the team from the beginning. How does it feel, Legends Cup winners? What are you going to do to celebrate? Well, we're definitely going to after party. We have sacrificed so much for this. No one's had a drink in so long. So we can't wait to just be with each other and, and relax. These girls have worked so, so hard to be here. And, you know, Mogax has been a massive part of it. And we're just so thankful that she's here and she's able to share, you know, a fourth cup. And we did it, baby. We did it. How so exciting. We'll go celebrate with your team. Back to you guys. Thanks, Sarah. What a <laughs> special moment for those two. And we'll be back as I head down to the field for the trophy presentation. All right, guys, we are, we are officially at the end of the first ever LFL Australia season. Thank you to all the fans that came out all year. My name is Mitch Mortaz. I'm with the front office, and I wanted to be here on hand to congratulate the new South Wales Surge, your 2014 LFL Australia champions. We also want to congratulate the Western Australia Angels for making it this far, and all you incredible fans for supporting them all year long. 
If we could get uh, Coach Jason Caffey up here. Here's the first ever Legends Cup trophy. Enjoy this one. I just want to thank uh, the uh, Angels for a great game and a great season. I want to thank uh, Mitch for, for bringing the NFL to Australia. It's been, a, it's been a fantastic experience for the last two years for these girls uh, and myself. I've learned a lot. I hope to learn a lot more, and I hope to see everybody back here in the next one. Now, where's Jacinda Barkley, our, lead, our game MVP? Jacinda, talk to us about capturing the first ever F -er MVP in a Legends Cup game in Australia. It's gotta be a special feeling. It's super special, I'm loving it, hometown. I got my crew out there representing. Love these girls. Couldn't have asked for anything more from them, so I'm super stoked, thank you. Now let's talk to Monique Gaxiola, her fourth championship. <laughs> Mo is obviously one of our US imports that came over a long ways from home, sacrificed the holidays at home, and now you're here with your fourth championship. Um, it's just a real feeling. I mean, it's indescribable. These girls, I wouldn't have done it without them. They're a great squad, and I knew since day one when I came out here in Australia about a year ago that they were going to be something special. And I'm so glad to share it with you guys. I love you all, coaches. New South Wales, I love you guys and the rest of Australia. Thank you for welcoming with open arms. I really appreciate it. Bronte, come on over. You are 24 hours removed from being the defensive player of the year. Now you're an LFL champion in Australia. How does this feel? To be honest, it's so surreal just being here with all these girls. This journey is crazy to take the cup home with us. I don't, I don't know a team that deserves it more than us. Seriously, we're so tight. It's amazing. <laughs> well, New South Wales Surge, congratulations. Drink some champagne from the trophy and enjoy this one. Thank you for coming out, guys. Scenes of jubilation down on the ground for the first ever Legends Cup. All four teams in the LFL competition. Two years of hard work, a lot of practice, a lot of sweat, a lot of tears. Tonight saw the surge, 36 defeat the Angels 15 in the 2014 Legends Football Cup. I'm John Rowan on behalf of the entire production team. It's been my honor to be in the broadcast booth. We hope to see you back again at the end of this year.